Hi, I'm Daria. This is a month late video, but I am going to share with you my Genesis RPG collection. And I'm going to do it in a fun, quirky way where I open them up as presents under the tree because I have my tree set up and why not? So let's get this thing done. All right, so we're going to do this unwrapping present style. I have next to me a ton of oddly Sega Genesis shaped packages. And well, obviously I know what's in the collection. I don't really remember exactly which game is in which box because there's a lot of them. In fact, let's take the camera. Hold on. We're going on a little excursion here. There's a lot of packages under there. Oops, cheeky cam. There's, there's a bunch. Let's readjust here. I think I'm presentable. I don't know. Anyway, um, if you've been following me on Twitter or Instagram, you've seen I've been taking pictures the whole way of just the wrapping process when I went out and bought more wrapping paper because I ran out of wrapping paper. Unfortunately, you didn't really get a picture of me strapping the four rolls of wrapping paper to my bike because that was fun. Um, but anyway, enough babbling. Let's get into this. Like a child on Christmas Eve. And oh, the first one is a turd. Alright, let's get that in the frame. Super hide lid. Um, I like the artwork. I think that's about the kindest thing I have to say about this game. It has a really nice box. And it's got this cool painting on the back. Kind of get that dragon in there. It's like one of those Chinese lion dragons. I've tried playing this game. It's wholly confusing and wholly hide lid and just not my thing. Next one. Ah, Sword of Vermilion. Um, so this is another game I haven't played a whole lot of. A bad start to the video. But I do have a story. Once when I was a kid at Ce Cecil B. DeMille's, which was a kind of a blockbuster type rental place um, up in northern Florida. I was shopping there one day and I spotted sort of a million on the shelf. And I committed it to memory because I loved the look of the screenshots on the back of the box. And I thought game is going to be so amazing. And years and years and years later, when I discovered emulation, the first game I looked up was Sword of Vermilion. And I was very disappointed. Um, it's kind of a rough early Genesis RPG. It's got town roaming that you go out and there's first person dungeoning. And I'm not a big first person dungeon person. So that really wasn't my thing. But... It's somebody's thing, it's just not mine. Ah, here we go. Fantasy Star 4, which is gonna get a lot of glare because it's in a nice shiny box protector because the later Sega published games all came in these nice cardboard boxes. I have never played Fantasy Star. I'm losing a lot of gamer creds right now as I'm opening up game after game and I'm like, I haven't played this one. I swear I've played a lot of these. There's a bunch. And then we have Kadash, which is more of an arcadey um, platformer. I probably should have taken down, to be honest, because we're doing all RPGs. Um, but you get levels. I actually played through this, well, not entirely, but I played a little bit of it recently with, um, Agro Sky. Um, he and he has his Shmup Master channel. He came to visit 
with uh, Tony Brazel, and we sat down on the couch and we played a little bit of this, and it was fun. I enjoyed. I think he went home and like bought it. Like he was so impressed, he like tracked it down and purchased copy. Agar Sky did not not Brazel. Oh, here we go. Here's one I'm familiar with. Canon. This is a Taiwanese developed bootleg as an unlicensed, not like, it's all wholly original. Like it looks very derivative a little bit. It takes inspiration from Secret of Mana visually with a lot of Shining Force in it. And it's a strategy RPG where you go through battle after battle with different challenges like it'll be like oh defeat the general you know open up all the chests I don't know if that's one but there are chests you can open and I really really like this and I was so excited when Pico Interactive did a licensed Eng English release so this isn't even a reproduction this is legitimately as legitimately as you can get in 2019. English. English. <laughs> English. It's an English release. I mean, that's not totally inaccurate. Also has this really cool flip sided artwork on it. Which you can put. I have it the uh, brand inside out. But I've, I've put it in the box, so I have the other one facing out sometimes. It's really nice. So I'm going to struggle to get it back in here on camera. But yeah, if you like Shining Force type games, look into this, because it's, it's fun. It doesn't have the, the town roaming that Shining Force has, uh, but it's a lot of really challenging battles, and they have multiple stages. Like, you have to keep your characters alive through multiple stages, and kind of like battle sets that can get it, it's, it can get pretty hard um but i played through a lot of it in taiwanese and then i played through a tiny bit of it in english and it's just it's just a fun game this is dun, 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 dun. <gasps> fatal labyrinth now a lot of people will tell you that this is a terrible game i disagree I think for what it is, Fatal Labyrinth is actually pretty cool, which is a roguelike, um, procedurally generated dungeon game. And it was developed originally for the Sega Channel, so this was meant to be a downloaded service game. And then after they released it that way, they put it on cartridge so you could buy it at home. And it's a budget title. Like, they Sega didn't put a whole lot of whole lot of resources into this but I think for what they made it was really fun especially if you like roguelike games you know where you go through a dungeon and the rooms open up as you explore and you pick up loot and the monsters move at the same time you do like you move a step they move a step and if you die it's game over like there is it's it's a one-shot deal so it's it's a challenge game and if you like this also check out its sequel, Dragon Crystal, on the Game Gear Master System. Now we've got... Woo! Look at that paper fly! That's my game's paper. Wonder Boy. Now, I played Wonder Boy through, like, three or four dungeons. I was streaming it, so maybe my regular viewers could let me know how much exactly I played of this, because my brain don't work so good. Um, it was hard. It's a side-scrolling action RPG, not unlike Wanderers of Ease, or maybe Fox Xanadu, um, but super cute. I really enjoy it, even though I'm really not any good at it. I think it's just an adorable game. And I'd like to get better, like I'd like to revisit it. And of course the Wonder Boy series is 
so massive and it has, I could go on and on, you know, about how it has its roots in, uh, when it was just Wonder Boy and then those were the action platformer games and then it branched off into Adventure Island and Wonder Boy and then it's like Monica games in Brazil. It's so weird. This is one of my favorite. Actually, it's supposed to be my face. I'm trying to. Anyway, this is one of my favorite Genesis RPGs Dungeons and Dragons Warriors of the Eternal Sun. This takes place in Hollow World. Um, so the whole universe. Universe? Universe. The whole universe is this crater. And there's a town in the middle of the crater, and the crater, like, you can't get out of the crater. But, wow, words are not with me today. You cannot get out of the crater. And the sun never sets, so it's forever sunny, and you're trapped, and the game handles this brilliantly, because there's this town there, and everyone is just, they're going insane, because the they can't sleep because the sun's always up and they're surrounded by monsters and it, and it as you progress in the story you come back to this town and the people are getting progressively worse and worse and worse and it is an eerie atmosphere and just it's just a fucked up game but if you like Ultima it's a total Ultima clone and a lot of fun what could go wrong? Now, I do have an idea of what's in these because this was the original paper I was using before I ran out and bought the polar bears and penguins. So these games are my boxed. Well, everything's obviously boxed, but my cardboard boxing. <gasps> Shining Force 2. Another one of my favorite games from my favorite series. Um, I played through Shining Force 2 again, or most recently in May. I kind of did a May the Force thing, but instead of Star Wars, it was Shining Force. And I played through Shining Force 1, 2, and Shining in the Darkness. It was like a whole marathon streaming event, which I actually still have up on the channel. So if you want to catch any of that, find the playlist. I'll link it. And you can watch. I'm going to take this out of its protective aura. Masticky armor if I can. There we go. Get without the glare. Well, mostly without the glare. The artwork on this is so terrible. It really suffers from bad American art. Which has a little bit of a Guardian Legend vibe with these eyeballs in the sky. Not sure why anybody thought that was a good idea. Now, my cartridge has kind of a patina to it, which I don't know if you guys can see real well. It's really dark. Genesis games and Atari games both have this issue with adhesive. Um, and I think it is affected by humidity. So living in Florida, it the adhesive darkens over time and shines and shows mother fucking motorcycles. I don't know if you guys can hear that. The adhesive darkens over time and shows through the label and it gives it kind of a messy, blotchy look. And there's not really a whole lot you can do about it because it has a lot to do with just manufacturing and just age. It plays well, and that's really all I care about. And what else we got? Somebody. I try to open these more on camera instead of putting them in my lap. You guys are looking at them. Is that? Oh, Star Odyssey. Um, this looks like a reproduction. It is not. It is again an unlicensed 
well, actually this game is licensed. I take that back. This is a newer release within the last decade, or the previous decade, since the decade just ended, I guess, um, from Super Fighter Team, who recently, as of last month, refunded me their what was supposed to be their latest game release and shut down their publishing operations and are going out of business as a new old game publisher so that that that's sad and you can see right there the super fighter the super fighter logo um star odyssey was originally going to come out back in the day as blue almanac and it was there's a prototype out there like it was it was finished it was translated it was going to come out and then sadly as often happens it was shelved and didn't happen um until 2011 apparently 2011 this came out in america and it's kind of a as the name implies star odyssey it's a sci-fi kind of fantasy star like game where you go to different planets and it's got traditional uh, turn-based battles. And this really cool uh, Katsuya oh, artwork, which I really, maybe I can get it here on the manual where it's not so shiny. I think it's Katsuya, Katsuya. I'm terrible at Japanese names and I'm not looking at a reference. I've tweeted about him a whole bunch. He's one of my favorite game artists and he did the illustration for this and it is beautiful. I'm sad that uh, Super Fighter didn't make that artwork more prominent on the box. Like, you've got a legendary illustrator doing your artwork. Blow that shit up. Take up the canvas. Don't, don't squash that down into a little image. Like, show that shit off. But, I don't know. I appreciate Brandon Cobb's releases. I don't think he has the best visual eye. What can you do? At least he was making them. Here we go. The Immortal. Will Harvey's The Immortal. Um, this is a dungeon delver. Kind of like, think of the original Diablo. Uh, but there's a lot of traps and your little wizard dude is going to die a lot. He's very squishy. I haven't played a whole lot of this. And I've showed it off before. I have the NES copy as well. And when I did my NES collection video, it's in there. Moving on. We got some, some new paper. Some bright, colorful Christmas lights. Ooh, Battle Master. Um, this is probably one of my more recent first purchases. I haven't, again really played this one. It does say role-playing action for one player on the back, so I'm going to take its word for it and say it's an RPG and it belongs in the collection. Let's see. A world of dwarves, elves, humans, and orcs. Mounted in the crown of each race's king is one of the four scattered shards of the Watcher Tower Gem, which must be returned to its rightful place beyond the world degenerates... Oh, before. Before the world gen degenerates into oblivion. Conquer all four races with the army you assemble and lead into battle. I think this is kind of RPG mixed with uh, strategy battles. It looks cool. Um, it's It says free poster inside, but sadly I have neither the poster nor the manual. Just a cart. Next one. Sorry if I seem like I'm rushing. I have to go through and I'm getting sweaty. Fairy Tale Adventure. I'm not so sure that this game is very good. Um, you play as three brothers who are off on a quest. And when you don't really play as all three, you kind of play as one brother at a time. And that's your three lives because each brother dies, the next brother steps up to take over the quest, and if you kill him, you know. That's it, game over. So don't kill all the brothers. I died in a farm. Something attacked me. I didn't get beyond the first town. There was a farm there, and it was deadly, and the farm killed me. And 
that was the fairy tale adventure as I experienced it. Sad but true. That was a bit of a commercial break because if I let my camera run for too long, it loses frames. And then my audio is off. That's let's rip her open. The Legend of Wukong. This was the second Super Street Fighter. Or Super Street Fighter. Oh my god, have I been calling him Street Fighter the whole time? The Super Fighter Team Genesis releases. Um, this one is Taiwanese. Uh, Star Odyssey or Blue Almanac was a Japanese developed game. A uh, licensed by Sega. This was not. This was one of those um kind of hobbyist well I wouldn't even say hobbyist because they were a company they were they were selling these in, in China and it's the story of oh Journey to the West the little boy and the monkey and the pig or the or the monkey boy and the pig go off on a quest across China actually know the Journey of the West story, but this is one of them. It's a very popular uh, adaptation source for video games. And Dragon Ball Z, apparently. There you go. Into the little Kong. It's cool artwork. This is where uh, this release is where Spider Team really started to pay attention to their packaging a little more, as you'll see when I open up their first game. Uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, and look at that. I did. I swear I didn't try to do this. This is their first game, Beggar Prince, which is the first release. It's had much better art since then. This is quite ugly, I, I must say. It's a treasure. And I guess these, for a while... I would say, hey, go to Spider Team's website and, you know, you can pre-order a replacement or your own copy, not with this art, but with the better, nicer art. But you can't do that anymore because, again, they quit doing that and they've taken down all the links to their store. So I don't know if these are going to go up in value. Now might be a good time to jump on eBay and maybe find one before people realize that they aren't going to be available at all. I think, but... They were already kind of expensive, so I don't know if you even want to do that. Maybe just find a ROM. I didn't tell you to do that, but maybe you should consider doing that. If you want to play it. Oh! Just moving on. The game. Uh, it's a traditional RPG. Takes inspiration from... Looks like Breath of Fire. The battle system. And then the story is The Prince and the Pauper, where a prince happens to discover that he has a doppelganger who's a peasant, and they switch places, but then the prince, um, you know, realizes, hey, life is pretty good being a rich guy, and he tries to take his place back, but no one believes that he's him, because there is an evil um, advisor who is taking advantage of the situation and is now manipulating the peasant and uh, to be honest uh, what I know of Prince and the Popper uh, comes from watching the cartoon with Mickey Mouse that was a pretty faithful adaptation this, this game has uh, more Shat Kingdom and really it's, it's called Shat Kingdom and Minister Cat than it does I cannot remember the name of the bad dog in the Disney cartoons. Wow, that's going to come to me later and be like, I'm an idiot. You know, the neighbor dog in Goop Troop. Can't remember that. Whoops. Okay. Beyond Oasis. I've talked about Beyond Oasis before. Alright, we're up for this. 
I've even streamed a little bit of Beyond Oasis. And I featured it in my totally not Zelda Zelda game that you should play list. It's kind of a beat em up adventure game with gorgeous, gorgeous animation. It looks like a looks like a Disney cartoon. It's like the not Aladdin. But yeah, you play Prince Ali appropriately. And you've got the Jin, your genies. Um, that have different abilities and you can summon them to help you solve puzzles and mostly beat the crap out of things. It is, it's a fun game. Also on the Genesis collection, um, you have that. Which they had for 360 and PS3 and I think there's a newer one for the current system that I, I don't remember. Ultimate Genesis Collection is a treasure if you can get your hands on it. It's pretty cheap. So this is Star Trek The Next Generation. I really, really want to play this. I have no clue how to play this. It starts you off, like, on the bridge. And you can go to the different stations. And it's there's simulations going on. And there's communications. And, like, Klingons or something come at you. I don't know. I don't remember who the bad guys are in Star Trek it's been a while. Um, the Borg? I don't know. Anyway, bad guys show up and I die. My ship blows up and I die. But from the screenshots, you can get to like an RPG exploration mode and I really want to get there and I can't figure out how to do it. So one of these days I'm going to have to sit down with like a guide and like really study, maybe watch some videos. I'm going to conquer this game someday. I promise it. Alright. This is... <clears throat> more bootleg Taiwanese. I really have a um, healthy... <laughs> new, old release collection. Um, this is another Pico Interactive title. Uh, which is Brave Battle Saga, or is they've titled it Legend of the Magic Warrior. This is another game that takes inspiration from Breath of Fire, um, but doesn't actually steal resources. It's all new assets, just very, very Breath of Fire-y looking. I think they trace. There's a lot of tracing going on. Um, I played this a little bit as a ROM before they acquisitioned the translation for this release. So if you played the ROM, it's the same thing. Um, but I like having it in the package because I was enjoying it. There's not too many um, of kind of traditional JRPGs on the Genesis, which I think is why it's kind of known as not being the RPG system, even though clearly we have RPGs for it. But if you're looking for that type of gameplay, this would scratch the itch. This is gameplay. And pretty. Merry Christmas, all. Merry January Miss. This is King's Bounty. More of a strategy simulation game than RPG. More, more strategy battles. EA puts out some... EA games are hit or miss with me. I always buy them because you never know when one's going to be an absolute gem. I don't think King's Bounty is that. But you might get more mileage out of it. Okay. I got Gainer. Oh no, I can't find the suit. There we go. I wrapped enough of these. I am really good at wrapping Genesis size packages. By the way, I got a lot of practice. This is Sorcerer's Kingdom, which is probably the best game on the system you've never heard of. If you're not all that intimately familiar with the system, this is a obscure title and really, really good. Um, it's another tactical RPG, as Genesis has a bunch of those. You go through dungeons, though, and there's grids in your dungeons. And it, I, I did a, I did a review. So if you watch my, what's it called? Um, weird, gen uh, an epic adventures for the Sega Genesis. That's what it's called. 
I'll, I'll link it. It's the, I think it's the last game I covered in that video. It's the third one. Uh, I also talked about Fatal Labyrinth, Sorcerer's Kingdom, and Tracia. And of the three, this is definitely the best of the bunch. I love the artwork. Also, another Traco release, which Traco, as far as I know, uh, published this in Warsong. So, good on you, Traco, for bringing us some, some weird Genesis goodness. Next up, I like an ad from a video. I'm so sorry we don't have the kitty. Oh, look at that. They must have been next to each other. I did when I was unwrap when I was wrapping these. I was pretty much pulling them, you know, off the shelf. And on my shelf, I have these organized by publisher. So I'm, gonna, I'm trying to show the computer. Like the computer's got a camera on it. So this is War Song. Um, I this was one of the titles I grew up with. It's pretty much Fire Emblem on the Genesis. Permadeath strategy RPG. Or strategy gaming. I don't know if I'd really call it an RPG again. It's just battle after battle. Um, really challenging. A lot of fun. Great artwork. Langrazier, I think, is coming kind of back in vogue. This is called Warsong, but it's Langrazier 1. Um, because they've released... They, they actually just released this on the Switch. The Langrazier 1 and 2 collection. Um, so if you want to play some Warsong goodness, you can get it on Switch. So everything's on Switch. Or you can get on Genesis, like me. What else we got? We have... Oh! Oh. Tracia. So, this was a game I wanted to like. I, I, I don't like it. It's terrible. There. It's terrible and ungood really really slow and boring which is a shame because it's cute it looks like an old dots rpg which i'm kind of all about that aesthetic and it's got some it's got some ultima exodus on nes vibe going on with the battles like you you'll walk around the world and you'll get thrown into a battle and it'll be on a grid and then you have to move your guys on but everybody moves so slowly and i swear this game has lag which i don't understand because it's on a cartridge like, there's a lot of processing power going on and somebody's at the door so we're going to pause this all right so that was i'm not flashing it i'm wearing shorts um so yeah that was an amazon package I don't remember what we ordered, but I'm sure it was something good. Probably something boring for the house that we needed. Ah, here we go. This is one of the best RPGs on the system. Probably one of the best RPGs of the 16-bit era. And still a really good game. If you're looking for a non-linear, sandbox, mission-based Western RPG, look no further than Shadowrun, which I have a video detailing what is so wonderful about this game and why I love it so much uh, that you should check out. Love you, Shadowrun. And we also have, what do we have here? Let's let it snow. Okay, I taped this one a little too good. You think I was wrapping real presents? Shining in the Darkness. Bit of an oddity for the Shining games. This one is not a tactical RPG. It is a dungeon crawler. And it is one of the cutest, most adorable dungeon crawlers that I have ever played. And one of the few dungeon crawlers that I like. Because I pretty much only like... I like this one. I like Sword and Serpents on the NES. I like... Um... Arcana on the Super Nintendo, and Wizardry Tales for the Forsaken Land on PS2. So there you go. It's high marks up there with 
Oh, and Etrian Odyssey is really good, too. Okay, maybe I don't dislike Dungeon Crawlers as much as I thought, but they have to be, they have to be kind of cute. And this one is that. It's very cute. Oh. Be still my heart. It is. Shining Force. Here it is. My favorite game. Some of the battles. Which, I don't know, if you haven't played Shining Force, I don't know what's wrong with you. Maybe check out my video on it. And I will tell you all the ways. I love the Shining Force. I don't love this cover art, though. That's not my favorite. Although this guy has a really sexy mini skirt on. Wish I had legs like that. Okay. Coming up, we have... Ease! Return of the... Really? It says Return of the Wanderers on the back. I don't think that's a title, a subtitle. This is Ease 3 Wanderers of Ease. I don't know why it doesn't say that on the box somewhere, but I assure you that is the title. And apparently you fight lots of hornets is overly muscular at all. The red-headed hero. I don't know what it is about Ease 3. One, it's side-scrolling where the rest of the games were top-down. Um, not side-scrolling. And then it was released on any, well, Famicom didn't come to the U.S. So Famicom Master System. What is a Master System? Genesis. That was on Turbo Graphics. See, so yeah, I think it had four ports. There's probably a PC one out there, but it had at least uh, four console ports. And they all look different. And I own three of them. Oh, what's it say about me? Okay. Um, is... Ah, Exile. Another renovation game. Which, I love the cover art on renovation. It probably wasn't showing it off very well. Sorry, I'm just gonna... Um, it wraps around the artwork you can see carries over from the cover to the spine to the back. Okay. I love the effort they put into their packaging. Oh, Tracia. Tracia, for being as bad as it is, love this box so much. Prettiest. This is shelf candy right here. And Exile is no different. Exile's got that cool kind of Arabian cityscape thing going on. This cool guy on a horse. Exile is another side scrolling kind of action game. Really hard. Um, not as hard as Wicked Exile Wicked Phenomena on Turbo Graphics, where working designs completely screwed up the difficulty and made it impossible. That's funny. This copy was in really nice pristine condition, no longer. You guys can kind of see the hairline, um, some hairline like rips in the cover. A uh, funny story. I had when I was first starting out collecting, I didn't have a massive collection, but I had a sizable Genesis collection at that point, all on a wall shelf. <clears throat> Excuse me. All on a wall shelf, hanging up on the wall, where you put wall shelves. And my cat got it into her stupid fuzzy head that she was going to jump from my bed onto the top of the wall shelf, which would clearly not hold her. She brought the whole thing down off the wall. The games were cascading one by one falling, and I guess Exile must have been on the top because it landed kind of on the top of the pile and the shelf came down on top of it. And it was the only casualty. The corner of the shelf went right through the box. It was so sad. Relieved my kitty was okay. And honestly, considering 
how traumatic and explosive this event was, I was really happy that nothing else happened to the game, so that this was the one casualty. And it, actually, it's in pretty good shape. Like, you have to really look closely to even see there's an issue. So. Horrors of being a collector. We are not opening this yet, because I know what this is. Play games. Can you guess what is in the puppy and kitty paper? And why is it so special? Okay. This one. Ah, more Fantasy Star that I haven't played. I almost played this. I've told this story before. When I was a kid, I went to Target and they were selling. You know, at that time they had used video games. And I was considering this or a cartridge of Hydlid for NES. And I was like, hmm, Fantasy Star. And at the time, I liked fantasy, like medieval fantasy themed RPGs more than sci fi. I don't know why I was stupid. And the cover art for Highlight is really good. There's like this. I thought it was a woman. It looks like this female warrior fighting a dragon. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. I want this. And it's awesome. I felt bad. And for years, I was like, I should have gotten Fantasy Star 3. And I didn't even know which game it was that I hadn't picked up. Like, I didn't remember the title, but I did remember the screenshot on the back. And this is why, this is why screenshots are so important. I looked at this game in the store, and one game had screenshots and one game didn't. Because, again, I was buying a cart-only copy of Hydlet, so all I saw was the art. Um, but, hi, but for Fantasy Star, I saw the screenshot of these people lined up in this boring-ass castle in these boring environments in this boring battle and I was like eh, it's ugly so I didn't buy it and just think if they would have taken a prettier set of screenshots my my past my whole my whole life's traje trajectory could have been different screw you Sega and your his poor publishing practices Cursing me with high blood. Right. This is the least interesting renovation box, by the way. It does not wrap around. It is boring and awful. And renovation dropped the ball. With Arcus Odyssey, a wolf team game. Which wolf team would go on to create Tales of Fantasia? This, however, is Arcus Odyssey, a very diagonal based. Uh, kind of gauntlet type game uh, where you're very arcadey. You're going through the dungeons with a friend. It's multiplayer. Um, I also played this with Agro Sky, Sh the Shmup Master. That was a lot of fun. Again, kind of difficult. Uh, cute though. So if you like kind of Diablo type games, I would recommend highly. <sighs> Again, I'm flashing y'all with my shorts. Sorry. Oh, not yet. Not yet, special game. Alright, here. This is. Oh, an actual gauntlet game. We had Arcus Odyssey, which is kind of like Diablo and Gauntlet, and then we have the actual gauntlet. Um, again, some people are gonna be like, that's not an RPG. Cheater. I don't care. Screw you. Um, I grew up playing Gauntlet 1 and 2 on NES, and I really enjoy the series, so of course I wanted it on Genesis. And this copy, I, I did a trade uh, with Rewind Mike, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it was Rewind Mike. I sent him... Uh, I had a copy of Little Ninja Brothers. I upgraded mine to a CIB version, and I sent him the cartridge, and he sent me Gauntlet 4, which is surprisingly pricey. I don't know why, because it's, I mean, 
Gauntlet. I don't know. It looks just like Gauntlet too. So if you have a Gauntlet itch, this isn't necessarily the version that you need to grab. But it does support four players if you have the uh, multi-tap adapter or whatever they call them, Genesis. So that's probably it. I don't know. I don't have four. Ah, Might and Magic. It's a dungeon crawler. It is thick and heavy and dungeony, chocked full of dungeon goodness. I've never played it. I don't like the wizardry type games. They're, well, except for Tales of the Forsaken Land. But that is different. That is a anime inspired creation on the PS2, and it is beautiful and gothy and wonderful. These are not gothy and wonderful. These have crudely drawn dragons and lots of information blocks and bats and I don't have much fun with them. Although I kind of wish I did because these these enemy designs are, are a thing of beauty. Look at that blue, that blue blobby dude. I can't even, I don't even know if the camera picked that up. That blue blobby dude. And dwarf crotch. I don't know. I should probably rethink my whole outlook on wizard might magic. This looks looks great. I love you. Ah, Fancy Star Two. So I said I've never played Fancy Star game. I lied. I have played Fancy Star 2. And I didn't like it. So that's probably why I don't want to play any more Fancy Star games. I keep looking over here because my computer's over here, but the camera's here. So I probably should have moved it. I'm trying to make sure I'm staying in frame. I, you know what? This is a Christmas video in July. So you're going to take poor production value and poor setup and poor filming practices and you're gonna like it or not i mean I don't, maybe you won't like it maybe you'll put the thumbs down you do you do you i'm fine with that i've made my choices i will live with the consequences uh but fancy star 2 it wasn't fun and i didn't like it and it was hard and boring and there were dungeons that never seemed to end and they were all confusing and If I would have liked it better, I probably would have played the others. I should play Fancy Star 4, though, because it looks gorgeous. Like, Fancy Star 4 is a complete different ballpark than Fancy Star 2. And I should, I should play it. I keep grabbing that special game. But you get me a look. I keep fingering my game. Also, I'm very disappointed we've had no cats this whole video. Like, I'm doing an unboxing video and no kitties. But they apparently don't want to come and play. I'm sorry. No Christmas cats. I'm showing you back the box. Landstalker. Love, love Landstalker. Isometric, um, dungeony. A lot of people will say it's Zelda-like. I don't particularly find it very Zelda-like because it's not... It's not big on puzzles. Like, there's switches. There's some puzzles, I guess. There's switches and stuff you need to do. But mostly it's jumping-based. It's isometric platforming. Um, a lot of humor. It's gorgeous. It's it, Visually, it looks like a cartoon. And if I had to rank the games on the Genesis, this would be in the top ten. So if you haven't played Landstalker, do yourself a favor and play Landstalker. If you have played Landstalker, do yourself a favor and play Alundra. That's my PSA for today. Okay, we're down to three games. The tree is quite... No, no we're not. Holy shit, there's another stack here. I lied. I thought I was down to three games, but I found more. There's more! People said there were no RPGs on the Genesis. Look at this. There's more. There's always more. Okay. 
Let's keep opening. I'm losing my mind here. I'm like sitting in. There's so much paper. I'm sitting in all this paper. I feel like a cat. Ow! Like Crusader. Another asymmetric platforming game um, from Treasure. Can you believe it? Treasure made a RPG of sorts. Um, I've played a little bit of this on emulation. I haven't played this copy because it's, I don't know if you can see that. This is particularly hard to film because it is factory sealed. And I really need to get, I'm just going to buy a loose cartridge because uh, originally I bought this with the intention of opening it. And yeah, it kind of seems like a shame to do that. So I, I have to buy that again. This is thick. I don't know what this is, but it is quite substantial. Oh, I know what it is. Yes. It is Buck Rogers. No, it's not. It is Starflight. That's wrong. It is Starflight. Um, again, this is another one of those really meaty EA games that I haven't um, gotten into because it's got a learning curve to it. And if I can overcome Buck Rogers, I can do Starflight, surely. Look at this beautiful literature. I don't think that is. That's the manual. And it is, there are no pictures. There's a couple pictures. Ooh, there's some artwork. Holy shit, I never noticed that before. Look at the artwork. Alien landscape. Ooh, 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 and an alien. It's like a dinosaur alien. He's gonna shoot somebody with a blaster. This is this is beautiful. There wasn't anything this cool in the Buck Rogers manual. Of course, my Buck Rogers manual is from Europe, so they, if there was anything cool like this, they probably took it out so they could put it in French. Really cool. It's like a robot. Oh, they look like T1000s. Those are some like serpentine Dalek things. Like squishy Krang like guys with tentacles and some organic ships. Those are neat. Oh, there's a lot of this. Those bug people? Holy shit, now I really want to play Starflight. Oh, I'd love to. These would be awesome posters. We should blow this up and have like. little space walls. Just there. Okay, this is the last one. I'm not even sure what that is. It looks like liquid metal. I'm not sure if that's a spaceship or a creature. hiding in here? No. I got a map. It's actually a really nice copy of this game. The coordinate map. Starflight star map. This is the star map. And there's games on the back. EA games. James Pond. Immortal. Battle Squadron. Marble Madness. Lakers versus Celtics and the NBA playoffs. Centurion? I thought about buying Centurion, I don't know. Sword of Sudan. Oh, fairy tale. The fairy tale adventure. Battle through eight deadly quests to defeat the evil necromancer in this intricate game of myth and magic. I've never gone that far. Oh, look at this. My whole collection is in the adventure section. Starflight, The Immortal, Might and Magic, Sword of Sedan. I don't have Sword of Sedan. It looks just kind of like action side scrolling. Fairy Tale Adventure and the King's Bounty, The Conqueror's Quest. 
lead great legions to recover the lost scepter of order and restore the king's realm in this fast paced conquest adventure. Holy yellow section. That's, that's all about us. We were firmly shopping in the yellow. I wouldn't be kidding anyway. Or what else kid you would have been into? Maybe strategy. That looks like my dad's section. That's where he would have been shopping. And then I would have tried playing it going, this is hard. Why do you play the boring games? My dad had a Genghis Khan. Yep. On. Ugh. On NES. There's Genghis Khan 2 on Genesis, we just didn't own it or know about it. It's another fat game. My leg is falling asleep. I think I hit the EA section. Yeah. Rings of Power. I've never played this, it looks really weird and populous -y. Supposedly it's an RPG though. And I love this little guy on the front riding the wyvern. Look that guy's. Oh, he's a wizard. The, the green cloak. Oh, my legs. My leg, my bra, everything's discompobulated. Okay. Ah, here it is. Buck Rogers. I just released my latest video was a review of Buck Rogers haven't watched it because you're like, uh, Buck Rogers, what's that? That sounds boring. Watch it. It is awesome. I fell in love with this stupid, ugly game. And it was, it's based on the D&D rule system. And there's all like space opera -y things going on. And there's scenarios that play like the thing mixed with alien. And there's other missions. I'm like, hey, I'm in a Star Trek adventure. Like this, this game is legit cool and awesome and amazing. And if you like RPGs, play it. So good. Also, my obligatory, um, oh, wrong game. This is my obligatory, this <laughs> poor, poor case. Um, this is the one game in my collection. Well, maybe I got a couple. This is the Mega Drive game. Uh, it is it is on Genesis. Like, you don't have to buy the Mega Drive copy. Um, I bought it off someone. And this is... It was a friend. They were in Europe. They sent me this. And EA put Genesis cartridges in a lot of their... I want to say all, but... I don't know if I can... With absolute certainty, say all their games, but most of their games were Genesis cartridges, just repackaged in Mega Drive boxes uh, for Europe, and then they added, you know, the multiple. Look, it's got Dutch and Spanish, so that might be German, English, French. German and Spanish manual. I mean, this, look at this manual. And you saw the Starflight manual. I guarantee the English manual was equally as thick. I don't know if I'm missing some of the, like, like this is in black and white. And it's, I don't know, it's probably the condensed version. So that's a game I should probably rebuy in better packaging. Yeah. Just a couple more. We're almost there. I hope you can't hear my kids screaming. Uncharted Waters. Uh, tr trade simulation in uh, the Age of Exploration. I like it. I've, I've sailed around as a pirate and bought and sold goods and went from Portugal to Spain, back to Belgium sold them spices and bought pirates and that's pretty much what this is. This game was on NES, Super Nintendo, and Genesis. I just happened to have the Genesis version. 
because of the systems, I favor this one. Although I love the NES as well, I just uh, wanted the 16-bit version of the 8-bit version. So, there you go. And I guarantee, because I haven't opened it yet, this is going to be Uncharted Waters 2. Oh, look. Behold, Uncharted Waters 2. Uh, this game adds more of a story mode. You can choose your captain at the beginning and they have their own scenario. I always choose Catherine um, because she's a girl pirate. She's probably one of the harder scenarios to play, so I should quit doing that. so good at this one. The ultimate role-playing adventure. I don't know if that's true. That seems a bit boastful. Kway. Kway's got some good stuff. Um, I like Uncharted Waters. I like Anindo, um, which was on Super Nintendo, and I like, I actually do like Genghis Khan. I mentioned that earlier. My dad. But... Um, what else do we got? We're down to two, three, three games. This is it. We're down to the, the last. We're going to open up this one first. Ah. This is not an RPG. I'm sorry. So um, this is a, another strategy war game. This one's hex-based. Like, the, the battles are all hex grids and you're wizards and you're summoning fantastic creatures to fight for you so you get like unicorns and golems and fairies and dragons and it's pretty cool you become the master of monsters and they fight each other let's see oh it's another renovation game but it's got a boring box so that's Although the, this artwork on the front is pretty amazing. Plus I have this on PlayStation. Um, which, weirdly enough, this version is worth a lot more than the PlayStation version, which I think is like a $20 game if that. This is much more. Um, I would give you a number, but I don't really know it off the top of my head. You can have a troll fighting a unicorn. What other game lets you pit unicorns and trolls together? None. Okay. Then we have... Finally. I don't know if you've been putting, putting your bets in on what this is. What would I put in the puppy and kitten paper? What special game deserves its own wrapping paper that I had just enough square to use on one game and then went, oops, I should go buy some more paper. It's special. This is the most expensive game in my Genesis collection. I don't know if it's the most expensive game in my overall collection, but it might be. And that is Crusader of Senti. And I'm sure some of you are looking at this right now going, that's not a box. And you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, Crusader Senti came in a cardboard box. And I've told this story before, so some of you know what's about to happen. And some of you are about to, to, to cry out in horror as I show you my homemade cardboard slip case. So this is legitimately the original box. I bought it for $25, complete in box in beautiful condition. And I said, you know what? I really don't like these cardboard boxes. I'm going to keep my game safe and it'll look good with the rest of my collection in a clamshell because I'm a freaking idiot. Um, if this were in the condition I bought it in, it would be worth $500 today. Uh, as such, it, I think it's worth about three. Maybe, maybe more, maybe, I don't think it's any less than that. Um, but I do have the manual. Manual's, manual's in fine shape. Manual's looking good. 
cartridge is in gorgeous condition. No patina, no issues that we talked about with the adhesive earlier. Really nice, really nice condition. Um, my friend Richter sold me this back in the day for $25. Richter, if you're out there, thank you very much. Richter's a sweetheart and I will love her for sending me this game. And last but not least, I have one more game, which is not as prestigious or as fancy. Actually, it might be fancy. It's pretty fancy. It's not as prestigious as a Crusader, so. but it's still pretty cool. Um, so we're gonna, woo! Here's Salar. Not, not uh, factory sealed. I cut open the clam shell so I could, we could take the game out because I like the little sticker and I didn't want to bring the sticker. Uh, Pure Salar was a fan-made uh, Genesis game. The first title from Watermelon. Um, is it the only title from Watermelon that they actually ended up producing? I know they published um, some other stuff, but I don't... This might be their only game that actually got made. Maybe. So yeah. So yeah, we have um, Pure Solar. Well, actually, they made Pure Solar on Genesis and they re-released it on Dreamcast. And they made many, many copies. This is the original printing. Uh, I went with the European pack, the... No, I didn't. I went with Japanese. It's Japanese packaging. Japanese is red. I'm confusing myself. Anyway, I went with the blue Mega Drive version uh, because I liked the aesthetic. I didn't like the red Genesis logo uh, on the box. I think the, the red version might be worth more. I don't know. I think they printed more of those, but I think people want them. And this is just, it's, it's a really, really nice package here. The gold leafing on the artwork is, I mean, give them shit for everything. They put together a really nice package. So I guess that was the difference. You could either, back in the day, you could go with a watermelon game, which would take years and years and years uh, to come out past its original uh, release date. And it would be gorgeous and amazing, or not come out at all, <clears throat> as the case may be. Or you could go with Super Fighter Team, which had Bobo packaging, but they released four RPGs. There you go. I also have the Dreamcast. I, I bought this on Dreamcast as well. Which, if you're looking to play Pearsolar, I think it's on Steam too. Like, you could just download the game and play it. Purch you know, purchase it. Um, but you could just freaking play the game. But if you're looking for a copy to play, I would go with the HD... Uh, release on Dreamcast. It's got some, um, it's got some gameplay tweaks, which make an improvement over this one. Also, my friend Zeb worked on this, uh, so that's another thing that makes it kind of special to me is, you know, knowing someone who, whose work went into it. Oh, and it's got the The enhanced audio CD. Um, I can hook this up to, I believe, my Sega CD um, and put this in. Yeah, this disc contains a hi-fi PCM soundtrack, ambient 3D sound. Insert into a connected Mega CD unit to enable the enhanced sound. To enable the enhanced soundtrack. So that, that is everything. I believe it's 
44 games is what I opened. Um, obviously, my definition for an RPG might be a little looser than yours. You can give or take a couple of those numbers. Uh, but approximately 44 games, if you're an RPG enthusiast, is what you're going to find on the Genesis. And there's, there's something here for everybody. Let me... Here they are. The big old stack. There's... You're going to find something to play. No matter who you are. Do not discount this library. There's a ton of cool stuff. Grab the hard stuff. Just, just fed them. Oh, there's a cat. Here he comes. Hello, some cat sighting. Hannibal. Hannibal. Kitty, 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 kitty. Hi. You gonna come play with us? You see the paper? I think that's where I'm gonna leave it. Um, thank you all for watching. Um, be sure to check out maybe some of my reviews of a few of the games we covered if you haven't seen them already. This is where I'm going to plug my social media. If you want some behind the scenes um, photos, you know, check me out Daria Plays on Twitter or Daria Plays on Instagram. I will have links in the description. And always, um, thank you for watching. And I hope you all had a good holiday season, no matter what uh, holidays you participate in or don't participate in, as the case may be. And hope you all have a happy new year. So, I was getting to the end of the video and realized I'd forgotten a game, and Mr. Hannibal here is going to help. Kitty, kitty, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, lay down, lay down, lay down, lay down, Pirates, gold. It's like the enhanced version um, of Pirates, which was also on the NES, and then there was Sid Meier's Pirates, which is the remake on the original Xbox. These are great games if you enjoy pirating and sailing. I highly recommend them. A lot of fun. And I'm very sore that I didn't open this in the original video, but now Hannibal gets to participate, so it's all good. Isn't it, Hanny? That's right, he's gonna love up on the game. He's giving it kisses. This is a really bad shot of my leg there. Okay. Bye again.